You're listening to JTE Movie Thinks. Is that is that the title? Is that is that correct grammar? All right, we'll go with it. It's a show about movies and thinking. And now here's your host, Every Man's Hero, JTE. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of JTE Movie Thinks. Can I just say I love Ken's intro? It's just it's it's so funny. <laughs> Ken always knocks it out of park where he's doing the news or helping me with the intro for my little podcast. But it's not a little podcast today, people, because I got a great guest. You know him from movie fights. He is the champ, Mr. Dan Murrell. What's up, Dan? How's it going? <laughs> it's going I- I'm good. ready to think. You ready to think? I'm ready to do some thinks. <laughs> what did you think when you heard that title? Because I think I was like, hey, you want to do my podcast? I probably didn't even tell you the title. I didn't know it was called JTE Movie Things. <laughs> what do you think of that title? It sounds like you're saying movie things, but you have a cold. <laughs> That's a good way to put it, yeah. It kind of came, I remember I was in the car with Mark Ellis. And I was like, dude, I'm doing a podcast soon. I'm trying to think of a name. I was like, Josh Knows or JTE Knows? And they're like, no, you stay away from that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that is, I didn't really like it either. I was like, what about JT Movie Things? Because I'm known for mispronouncing things on a the show. There you go. It's kind of what I'm famous for. And it, just not good grammar. Yeah. Well, no, I, I do that sometimes. Sometimes I sit down and I have a good movie think. You know? it's yeah, like it's a, a good movie think. It's like a, like a spa session. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like, a good old movie think. If you're watching Transformers, you're not having a movie think. No, no movie <laughs> It's more thinks. of like a movie dump. <laughs> yes. You're just watching garbage. Yes. Um, all right, Dan, so... I'm excited to have you on the show. Um, you are my third screen junkie. All I've right. had Mr. Nick Mundy. Oh, boy. Uh, can you guess what movie he talked about? Die Hard. No. More um, Current. More Current? Man of Steel. More Current. More Current. Oh, man. I can only imagine what Nick talked about. What did he talk about? <laughs> Fast Five. Fast Five. Of course, Fast Five. But it was because Fast Seven was coming around the time, and he was actually trying to show it to his... Then fiance, now wife. Now wife. Uh, yes, thanks to The Rock. And I mentioned this with Spence, too. Um... What do you, and Spence talked about Tomorrowland, right. which is a movie that was in theaters, which is actually kind of rare on this show because the way the show works, Dan, like I told you, I say, what's the last movie you watch, whether it be on Netflix, maybe it's a DVD, and you have a very impressive Blu-ray DVD show Thank over there. you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I would say it's on the same... I, I wish I had a picture of mine, just so I could give you an idea, because it's pretty damn close in quality. And I always say, quality over quantity. Yes, although, absolutely. Although I have a large quantity. <laughs> As you do. Uh, yes. Well, a lot of them are library titles, upgrades oh, from DVD. Okay. There you, you know, go. Stuff like that. But I agree. I don't buy. I never buy a movie just to buy it. Exactly. And I, that you know how you said you made that DVD to Blu-ray jump when, back when DVD started. I bought everything. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, Anything. Oh what? Three dollars for you know, <laughs> Shrek Part One. Yeah. Sure. Why not? But now when I was like, all right, if I'm making the next step from DVD to Blu-ray, I'm bringing this down. And I could literally go through my whole collection, and I'm confident that every single one of those movies are movies I truly like a yes. lot or love. Well, this is high definition. We're not yes. messing around anymore. Are you a little thrown off by the whole new 4K thing that's coming around? No. Now there's these 4K Blu-rays. How good do we need it, people? Exactly. I, <laughs> how good does a movie... Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's like Spinal Tap, you know? It's like, how about black can black get? It's like, exactly. none, it's none more black, you know? It's like, come on. None I, more black levels. It, exactly. It's all about the black levels. Uh, yeah, and I, I'm, I just... And Spence, we were talking about this, he's gone digital. He's in the digital realm. I know. He's not even about the physical copy. He doesn't... He, I, we talked about this, too. He yeah. doesn't get it. I, I, don't, I don't trust technology. I am okay. an, I am an old man in that sense. I don't I don't want it to be dependent on uh, what if my hard drive crashes or what That's if a good and don't point. talk to me about the cloud. I'm not even on board with the cloud. That, <laughs> yeah, I'm not with the cloud either. No. There's a great there's a feeling where you could just go up and grab that DVD off yes. your shelf. And I, I said this to my mother when I told her, you know, I'm sure she was a little devastated when I said I'm going to the film business. I said, well, you know when you go to a doctor's office and there's all these books on the shelf? He studies those books. He reads up on them. That's what my DVD Blu-ray shelf is. Those are my study material. Yes. When I want to study a film noir, I grab Blood Simple or No Country for Old Men. I want to study comedy, I'll go to, like, Coming to America and Spinal Tap. That's what they are for me. They're not just entertainment. Yes, they are that, but there's a lot of art. And it's fun just like I did last night, actually. Okay. I just like to stand there and just kind of look at it. Yeah, and I'll go right? And I'll just look at everything and I'll go, what am I in the mood for tonight? <laughs> and I'll just look and then and then one will just pop out at you and go like, okay, yes, I'll get that one out. <laughs> Let me ask you this. How do you categorize? Like, I go by genre, which is kind of a weird way of mm-hmm. organizing. So that way I feel like, you know what, if I feel like watching a gangster film... I, there's a certain section where I have Untouchables next to Carlito's Way, next to Scarface, next to Goodfellas. 
they're all in that little section. So like if I move from one genre, I know where to go for that kind of movie. I'm alphabetical. I oh, did alphabetical. briefly uh, experiment with chronological. <laughs> okay. Which took That's a lot. That's a totally. I didn't even, I didn't even cross my chronological mind. Chronological by release date. Okay. It took a lot of time and research wow. and effort, and it was mine and my roommate, so it was twice the size of what Holy we have over crap, there. Really? Uh, and it was there for about six months, and it was kind of cool because. You yeah, can kind of relive certain parts of your life. Mm-hmm. You know, you would see one, you'd see the summer of '96 all together. Mm-hmm. It was cool, but ultimately, it just was became unwieldy. It became too much of a project. Uh, yeah. Well, here's my here's my that what would bother me with that? Did you put Batman and Dark Knight next to each other, or did you? Separate no, they were separate. Them? Oh, that would kill me. I know. I can't. That's why, like, I have a comic book section. All the Superman movies <laughs> together. All the Batman movies together. I can't like have begins over here. The dark. Oh. I know. It's it's it, 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 it was a noble me. experiment. It was. Ultimately, a failed one. Listen, that's the first time I heard that, and I feel like I thought I thought of everything. <laughs> I never thought of that. So that's I give you credit for that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you a question I asked Spence. I think I'm going to start doing this more on my show. Sure. I've, I've only done it with Spencer so far, but I'm going to ask you this question, and this is a tough one, and you don't have to get too crazy with it. If I was going to throw you on a deserted island with a solar-powered DVD Blu-ray mm-hmm. <laughs> player slash TV player, mm-hmm. you're allowed to bring five movies. Which five movies are you bringing? Now, Spence, I'll tell you what, he kind of went one for each category, even though they're kind of like different genres of comedy. He's right. definitely a comedy guy. That's one thing I learned from him. What would be the five movies that you feel like you would have to bring with you? I know this is tough. <laughs> well, the first two would be my two favorite movies, which okay. would be, even though it is a deserted island, Jaws okay. and uh, Shaun of the Dead. Okay. So that's two down. Two down. Uh, man. man, Jaws is a tough one to watch on a desert island. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> you don't want to go I water. think if I'm stuck on a desert yeah. island, what's the difference? I, I, I wish a shark would get me. <laughs> that's a good point. Boy, that's that's a really tough question. Uh, sound like Andy? It's a tough. <laughs> that's one. a tough question. A tough one. That's, that's tough. Um, probably throw Shawshank in there. Mm, to keep the hope alive. I got gotcha. Hope alive. Young Frankenstein, because that's a really oh, wow, funny is that your movie. Favorite Mel it's it's. I don't know if it's my favorite. Okay. Blazing Saddles is great too, okay. but. I like silly humor, and I think it's the silliest. Totally understand. So there's that, and then, man, maybe Network. Network. I just what, bought Network I on Blu-ray. I love Network. It's <laughs> I, one of my favorite movies. That's great. I just bought it on Blu-ray two weeks ago. I, I need. I haven't rewatched it yet. I remember watching it in film school because my teacher basically like broke that movie down for us. It's a phenomenal film. Uh, all right, one more. What's, is that five? Is that five? Yeah, five. Sean, J- Jaws. Sean and Jaws, uh, Young Frankenstein. Young Frankenstein. Network. Network. One more. I got one more. Okay, I thought it was done. Um, <laughs> hmm. As he looks at his Blu-ray shelf. I'm looking at my Blu-ray <laughs> shelf right now. Which one of these would I bring? Be Guardians. Not Guardians. I just I was looking at Guardians. Not Guardians. Sorry. I just saw Guardians. <laughs> I was like, Guardians I said of, it. No, Guardians not of Guardians of the Galaxy. Galaxy. Great movie. But Great not, movie. Uh, Godfather, I think. Yes. Oh, I was just thinking in my head. I was like, I wonder if Godfather is going through his head. Godfather, to me, might be the closest thing to a perfect film. It's it one, is. Really like, good. it's just, it's film 101. I, I've talked about it on a podcast before. If you guys are out there and you haven't seen Godfather, I know, I hope there's not too many of you out there. Go see that film. Uh, the sequel is just as good, if yeah. not better, which a lot of people argue. Are you in the Godfather Two or Godfather One camp? I mean, they're essentially tied. They're yeah. such different movies. I know it's hard, even though it's it's Godfather One and Two, even though they're a se- one's a sequel to mm-hmm. the other, they're completely different. So yeah. I, I find it really hard to compare them. It's a good point. All right, well, let's get to the sh- part of the show we're supposed to be at. Uh, as you know, on this show, guys, we kind of go off on tangents. Uh, but all right, Dan Merle, so what was the last movie you watched from beginning to end that was not part of a screening job or something you had to do for Honest Trailers? Just something that you said, you know what, I need to watch this, or something you haven't seen before and you're like, I need to see this. Well, earlier this week I did another podcast. Uh, okay. And this movie came up in the in the course of our discussion, and, and I and I realized that I hadn't seen it in a long time, and I coincidentally uh, okay. had just bought it on Blu-ray. Nice. So last night I sat down and I watched That Thing You Do. <laughs> oh, Tom Hanks? Yes. Directorial debut. I think it's yes. the only movie he's directed. Oh, he, that and Larry Crown. Oh, that's right, Larry Crown. Not too many people remember that one. It is one of my favorite, favorite movies. And oh, I don't man. think a lot of people have, number one, seen it, or number two, yeah. remember it. And it didn't do well at the box office. Mm-hmm. The critics, I don't think, really flipped out for True. it. True. It is one of my favorite movies ever. It is ever. just It's wow. just delightful. 
Uh, there's not a, there's no irony. There's uh-huh. not there's no sense of bitterness or okay. or any kind of. It, it's just pure fun. Wow, this is great. Uh, I saw this movie in theaters. Yes. Uh, I, I remember when it came out. I was a huge Tom Hanks fan. I mean, who wasn't Tom Hanks fan in the mid nineties? Yes. The guy was destroying everything. This is Oscar, age. Oscar. He was just killing it. Um, and I was I, first of all, I remember this hearing the single before the movie. That it was very catchy. It's I bought a, the soundtrack. It's a really catchy, <laughs> it and is. it's full of catchy music. Yes. It's got the Mister Downtown, which mm-hmm. is like a kind of '60s spy it's the theme. It's down. Yeah, exactly, yeah. so good. And then like a kind of a uh, Diana Ross and the Supreme song. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it, and Tom Hanks helped write a lot of that music too. That's right. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's got great music. And the thing that I had, that I always realized, but I reminded it reminded me when I watched it again last night, is the performance. Like the the four guys that are the if you haven't seen it, yeah, yeah, it's about this group called the Wonders, mm-hmm. who kind of they're the Oneaters, the Oneaters, because <laughs> yeah. they try to do this thing <laughs> yeah. with one and then yep, and it's their kind of meteoric rise to fame in the '60s. Um, as kind of like a Beatles type group, mm-hmm. they write this song, that thing you do, and Tom Hanks plays their manager, and it's just so much fun. And the four uh, band members are Ethan Embry, yep, and uh, Jonathan Shake is the kind of tortured genius lead singer. Yes, yes, Steve Zahn, right? Steve Zahn, yep. who is hilarious so in that movie, and Tom Everett Scott, who's the, the drummer, yes, and the kind of Tom Hanks, the, Tom Hanks the young Tom Hanks. He literally character. was supposed to be like Tom Hanks reincarnated. <laughs> it's kind of eerie sometimes. Yeah. And they've all four kind of, uh, you don't see them as much anymore. Like, Ethan Embry was Seriously? in Cheap Thrills yeah. la- uh, last year, which was a great oh, okay. movie. Okay, I still haven't seen that. It's so good. Okay. Um, but the others, I don't... Steve Zahn's the only one who really kind of has some steady work. He was in, he actually had a recurring role in Modern Family this year. Did he? Yeah. I stopped watching Modern Family. You stopped watching? I did. Um, I don't know why he wasn't a bigger, I think it might have been career, like, he was in a lot of bad movies, but he <sighs> is Saving so Silverman. funny. Saving Silverman. In this movie, I'm trying to think, Sam Silverman, he was in, he was in, in Out of Sight, which is he was really good in, right? Uh, but yeah, he had a small loss. Oh, Rescue Dawn was like his big dramatic turn, I right? Feel like, yeah, with uh, Christian Bale, yeah, he's but he's always a funny guy, and I think he's he's a, he's never the, he's never going to be the lead. I feel like no. he's always going to be a side character. He's a character actor, which I think is great, and uh, he was fine. Modern Family, he plays like this. Hick family that moves next door who are just like these redneck kind of okay. swinger <laughs> couple. Uh, he was good. Um, so yeah, let's get back to the movie. Uh, I love this movie. I didn't even know it was on Blu-ray yet. It's on Blu-ray and the Blu-ray has, which is the other thing that I wanted to revisit. What? The director's cut. Wait, I didn't even know there was a director's cut of this movie. There's a director's cut of it and it's like an hour longer. Shut up. And it's actually... Shut up. An hour longer. It's like an hour longer. No way. And it's it's about 80-20. There's 20% okay. of it that I think could have still could mm-hmm. have still gone. But the 80% of it that's in there really adds a lot of depth to it. Wait, so this movie... Was it, was it originally like an hour 40 minutes? An hour, an hour 30, hour so you're 40 talking minutes. Like a two it's hours? Two, two and a half hour movie. I can't even imagine this thing being in two and a half hours. Like that, I feel like it's something. Like, was he pushing for an Oscar movie or something? I don't know, <laughs> but it's but it's not like it's not plot lines necessarily. Okay. It's moments. It's character moments. Huh. It's kind of a, the only thing that's kind of a bummer about it is you could tell that he didn't have enough time or money to like go in and do the full like post work on all the oh, extra stuff. Like... So it looks oh, a little no. rough in that. places. So that kind of sucks a little bit, okay. but it really does add. You just get these nice character moments that you is, don't get in the final cut of the movie. Is and it, it, was it Blu-ray or DVD? It's well, they're, they're, they released two DVDs. Okay. There was one that had the theatrical version, and they okay. separately released the. So you can't get both. Well, the Blu-ray has both. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. And wow. actually, I would recommend if you have never seen the movie, mm-hmm. watch the theatrical version first. Yeah. Because it's really fun and it moves along and it's really it's got okay. a great tempo and if you love the movie then watch the director's. Version. That's a, I, mean, I love when they give you both options yes. because one of my all time favorite movies comedy wise is Stripes. Mm-hmm. I bought it on Blu Ray and it comes with the deleted scenes in the movie, but there's no option to take it out. And just like you said, it's not the post was not done right. So every time one of those deleted scenes come up, the quality goes down uh-huh. and I don't like any of the scenes they added. So, like, if you have Stripes on DVD, keep it. For some reason, the DVD gives you the alternate takes. That's weird. And then the Blu-ray, they don't give you the option. It's a mixed bag. I, I bought... Have you seen Payback? Yes. Oh, that's, Mel like, Gibson a totally movie. different movie. It's a totally... And they don't really... I bought it on Blu-ray for the director's mm-hmm. cut, and I'm like, I really love Payback. Yeah. 
And I'm like, okay, I'll buy this. And I watched it. The director's cut is not good. It's not good. I love the actual the movie so better. much more. It's more fun. It has more like satire to it. Yeah, it's funnier. Yeah, it's, it's, more, it's got, it's a got the blue. Noir. Yeah, yeah, it's got like the blue tint. Whereas this one just totally took that away. I agree. And another movie, like you say, I never, I can't believe they had an hour to that movie. Um, I did not love Kingdom of Heaven when I saw it in theaters. I've heard. I haven't seen it either way, but I've heard the director's cut. Director's so cut is amazing. It's like literally almost Oscar contender material. I've never seen a movie make that big of a jump in quality with a director's cut before. Yeah, really, Scott's done it, and I feel like, yeah, of course, the final cut, Blade Runner, it's, it's better. Yeah. But I've never seen a movie go from okay to, holy shit, this thing could have been nominated for an Oscar. Right, because the Lord of the Rings movies were great yeah. already, and yes. then I love oh, the extended versions, me too. but but they were, they were already great. Exactly, exactly. So for me to watch a movie in the theater and be like, oh, that was good, then to see the director's cut and think... I mean, I was in film school when the director's cut came out. I remember like a bunch of my film friends got together, and we were all like, "Oh, the theatrical isn't that much better." But we hear this is better, and we were just all kind of blown away. I and you haven't seen either. I haven't seen. Don't Kingdom even Heaven watch the theatrical. At all. No, just ignore it. It's just ignore it. Go watch the director's cut, and it's honestly one of the most beautifully shot films I think Ridley Scott has done. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I, I mean, you, this is one of those movies you could put on a plasma seventy inch, no sound. And just have it in the background. It looks beautiful. Is that the one with Orlando Bloom in it? Yes. Okay. And if I have one criticism, it is I wish somebody else was in there except for Orlando Bloom. But he's not bad. Well, that, that's <laughs> I think that's like every performance Orlando Bloom has ever done. <laughs> How's true. Orlando Bloom in it? He's not bad. He's not bad. He's serviceable. He's a, you know, he's a pretty face. But that, honestly, now you can talk about it, it's probably his best movie. <laughs> because he's surrounded by so many great actors like Liam Neeson, Jeremy Irons, and, uh, Eva Green. Like, all these great character actors kind of almost disguises him. He kind of fades away a little bit. Okay. But it's very good. Uh, so let's talk about this movie. Um, the O'Neaters, also the, known as The Wonders. The O'Neaters. <laughs> that Thing You Do. I yeah. remember my, watching this with my sisters. They loved the movie as much as I did. I feel like anybody could love this movie. Yeah. And Tom Hanks did a great job of capturing that time period. He did, and it's just so... It's got, it's just got that purity to it <laughs> purity, that, that yeah. you don't see anymore. Like I love uh, Tom Everett Scott's dad. Who's running? Oh, which is something they flesh out a lot story. more in the director's cut. Yeah, he's running this kind of a pilot, a pilot failing yeah. uh, old mom and pop mm-hmm. uh, electronics appliance store, and it's the scenes where he's looking in the paper at the big big box competitor. It was the big yep. Telemart. It was like the mm-hmm. beginning of Walmart. He's just like, well, I don't think I want to work in a, wor- I live in a world where you have to stay open on Sunday. It's like, oh, they got a shoe polish kit. We need a shoe polish kit. Can't even can't get down with a brush. And I mean, he's so it's yeah. just like this old guy who just can't adjust yeah. to these times. Um, it, just little side characters like that, and it's just so much fun. Yeah, that's a. If I had to describe the word, the movie one word would be fun. Fun. Uh, it's very. Um, can, it's just like candy. It's just very delicious, easy to eat. And you just want to keep watching it. Um, one of the scenes I love in this movie, towards the beginning, is basically they recorded a song, and it starts becoming a hit. And as it's growing, it's starting to get radio time. And there's a great mm-hmm. scene where he hears it on the radio. He yes. runs to his dad's appliance store. Starts turning on all the radios. Like, everyone's running around. And the whole family's just dancing. It's like, I can feel the joy of, like, it's almost like somebody, you know, making a movie and it's finally coming out of the theater. Or, like, having a song hit the radio for the first time. There's just got to be this immediate joy that there, something yeah. you created is out there. I was watching that scene last night with just a big smile on my face. Because yeah. it's, you know, it starts because they all have these little ear radios. Yes. <laughs> and so they all kind of converge. And my favorite shot is when it's Liv Tyler and Ethan Embry and, and Tom Everett Scott are, are, are dancing around the store. Mm-hmm. And you just see it through the window, through the, window. the car pull yeah. up. And the other two come in yeah. and they're just jumping around. And it's just <laughs> so much fun and, 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 and so much, oh, man. You just don't get so, too many movies like that. Did you get to watch any special features on this yet? Uh, the special features weren't that extensive. extensive. It was more like, you know, your generic kind of making ofs, and they had a little okay. bit of a reunion thing. So, so I remember HBO, I don't know if they had a hand in this movie, but right when the movie was coming out, they were doing a lot of behind the scenes on this film. Right. And I remember seeing Tom Cruise talk about the movie and how, you know, being the first time directing a film. Why do you think, I mean, it wasn't a huge hit. No. But I think it's grown a fairly it's, good it's, cult following. It's, I think there's a little underground of yeah. that thing. I tweeted out last night, actually. Uh, while I was watching the movie, I said, "What movie is this from?" And it was the, in, the, in Hollywood. They play a they play this movie band called Captain Geach and the Shrimp Shack okay. Shooters. And I'm like, no one's gonna remember this. And immediately, like 20 people like oh. tweeted me back, like, "Oh yeah, it's a thing you do." So I know it's still out okay. there. Okay, I saw that tweet and I had no idea what it was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when Captain I saw Geach. it, I said, "I know this from something." And I was like, <laughs> "I just can't think of it." And then I was running around, and I was like, oh, "Okay, well, I'll figure it out." But um, so 
he directed. We also mentioned Larry Crown, which is not a very good movie. I didn't see. Um, it. I believe he also did. Did he do Band of Brothers? I think he directed episode or two. Well, I, think I know he, he directed at least one episode of Band of Brothers. Yeah, and then he also I think directed at least one episode of From the Earth to the Moon, which he also produced. Oh, that's produced. right. And yeah. That's, if you ever see, first of all, Playtone. It's his production that's company. That's right. So if you don't know where that came from, Playtone Records is the record that company thing you do. from that thing you do. Perfect. And if I, you know, that's funny. I never saw that um, from here to the moon. Mm -hmm. I never saw that series. He like produced it, and I he and Spielberg I think produced it, or maybe just just like Band of Brothers. And it's yeah, it's a lot like Band of Brothers. Yeah, it's great. Is it great? Oh, it's awesome. Okay, it's like ten or thirteen episodes, and they're all an hour long. And who stars in it? Anyone famous now? Or they kind of not? I'm sure. You know who was famous? That's in. That thing, that thing you do that I'd forgotten. Who? They do an interview with uh, Gus Grissom, the astronaut, on the like the Ed Sullivan yeah, yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brian Cranston. Really? Yeah. No way. Yep. Okay. Brian Cranston, I feel like, could show up in anything, anytime. I, I totally He's, forgotten that he was in that <laughs> Yeah, movie. I see Seinfeld reruns, and I'm like, oh, he was a dentist. Yep. Um, another uh, Charlie Theron. Yes. Is in this movie. And she gets a lot in the director's cut. She's in it a lot more. Really? It's actually kind of the weaker stuff because it's, it's just more of her with the dentist. Okay. It yeah. doesn't really add that much. Gotcha. But yeah, she oh, plays. Who played the dentist at movie? I don't know. He's, okay, he's, I was trying to remember something famous. Um, he looked like the the um, who's the guy that runs the TV show? John John McGinley. John McGinley. Or Ted yeah, McGinley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ted which, McGinley. Ted, I think. Which is the one that went on? The one that came on Married with Children and Ted McGinley. And Ted McGinley. Ted McGinley. Ted McGinley he looks like Ted McGinley, children. but okay. it's not Ted McGinley. Oh, um, so and then Liv Tyler plays the actual love interest. Faye. Faye. Is that the name? Of Faye? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all come back. I had a big. Well, it's funny because. Um, Another thing I forgot to notice is that Charlize Car- uh, Theron's character is named Tina, and her okay. her character is named Faye. And at one point, uh, no way. <laughs> at one point, they say Tina meet Faye. I'm like, well, that's weird. What? That's hilarious. Tina meet Faye. I had a big crush on Liv Tyler. Uh, Did it start? That movie came out when I was 13. Did it start with like Empire Records, or was that after this? Um, I don't think I saw Empire Records <laughs> oh, till after okay, this. This was okay. maybe the first thing I saw Liv Tyler oh, in, and I had a big crush on Liv Tyler. So. Really? I always liked Liv Tyler. I, I'm trying to think maybe if I had a crush on her. Yeah, this probably movie probably was a start. Yeah. Because, I mean, I liked her in Lord of the Rings, even though she wasn't in it too much. But, oh, I think Armageddon, Armageddon might have been. Yeah. And, yeah. Armageddon might be the first thing I really was like, oh, that's Liv Tyler. Yeah. Oh, man. So, do you think Tom Hanks should go back to directing? Do you think he should try taking a stab at it? I mean, I know Larry Crown's not good, but, like, if he wants to, I, I, I dig his, his view. He seems to be interested in telling very pure yeah. kind of stories. And, I, you know, if he wants to. But I also love him as an actor. So It's so funny how he started off, by the way, too, as such a comedic actor. Yeah. Bachelor Party, Splash, uh, The Big Red Shoe or something like the that. The Man That's with called? One the Red Shoe. The Man with One Red Shoe. I mean, he was just doing, like, Outla- Buzz and Buddies was his Buzz TV Buddies. star. Well, big, even even though he was nominated for an Oscar for That's it. True. was was a heavily comedic. I love role. Big. Big's a great movie. Big's a great movie. People, if you haven't seen Big, and uh, Copster from our show has not seen Big. And I keep what? telling them he needs to watch it. Oh, man. How do you... That piano scene alone is worth it. I mean... Uh, and just the, the the John Hurd yuppie character. Yes. I don't get it. I don't get it. He <laughs> just doesn't understand yeah. this guy who just is, is a kid at... Well, what he thinks is just a kid at heart. He's actually a kid. And you know what? I bought the special edition Blu-ray Big. I didn't realize he was nominated for Oscar all these years. For I mean, Big, yeah. I didn't know that. And I watched... The special features. I said, wait, what? He was nominated for an Oscar? And even back then, um, who plays Ripley, uh, Sigourney Weaver Sigourney was nominated Weaver. for Aliens. Yeah. I feel like that wouldn't happen today. They, they try so hard to go for that dramatic, like, you know, sick. It has to be something super serious now. Yeah. I feel like in today's film, Sigourney would not get nominated for Aliens. I think she might because she's so good in it that I mean sometimes people like with Melissa McCarthy and Bridesmaids she's mm-hmm. so good that that's even a, but I think but that's even though supporting. Oscar doesn't that is supporting but even though Oscar doesn't uh, I think it'd be like Johnny Depp and Pirates of the Caribbean because he got nominated okay. for Best Actor for that movie that's true I think if you're even though Oscar hates genre movies I yeah. think if you're really 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 good in one they almost okay. have to nominate yeah. you yeah I, I but the thing when I see when I hear you say that Johnny Depp he's such a large character. Yeah, Ripley is very kind of subdued and like she's not like this large personality. True. I feel like that's what you almost have to be to get an Oscar nomination for a comedy or something. And that was or a genre film. That was the first kind of female action hero. True. Because Sarah Connor is not yeah. a, a, a action in the first Terminator. She's very much more of a victim. James and two Cameron, is huh? when she's really the kick-ass. I think about James Cameron is really the one that kind of brought her. I mean, listen, when you saw Ripley in the first Alien, I didn't think you know superheroine. 
Part two is no. where she became the badass heroine that we kind of know her for. Yeah, she's a survivor in exactly. Alien, but she's not like, you know... Yeah. She, I mean, she's not, she became Ripley in part two. Yeah. She goes after the queen, and look at Sarah Connor, again, James Cameron. Yeah. That guy's really done a lot pushing the female uh, hero forward. He has. I mean, Cameron gets... Uh, that's why uh, we we had that fight on movie fights about it. I'm, uh, that's why I'm kind of depressed that he's going so far down the Avatar, the Avatar wormhole yes, because he so rarely makes movies <sighs> and uh, he. I don't want to know what his next three movies are. Yeah, <laughs> he knows how to make a blockbuster movie. Yeah, he does. I, I must do. have seen True Lies like five times. True Lies and uh, <laughs> even like The Abyss I love and the Abyss. Titanic. You know, and people people like Titanic somehow evolved into kind of a joke now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love Titanic. It's a good movie. It's a good effing movie. Yeah, people rag on it because oh, the, it doesn't start singing for two hours. Guess Dion. what? You get two hours of great character development, which is why you care about when that boat's going down. Except for Billy Zane. Well, his a, character yeah. is like he came in from like some kind of like 19th yeah. century Shakespearean play. It's like nothing yeah. on earth could sink this boat. Like he's, he's, he should have a huge mustache, which is just, like wax. I totally get what you're saying, but uh, yeah, I love Titanic. I think it's you know people just it's easy to bag on a movie after a while. Once it gets once a movie gets super uh, to a certain level of just you know fame and like stature yeah it's just easy to te- everyone wants to start tearing it down it is you know but it, it's mm-hmm. and james cameron just knows how to he's <laughs> cracked the formula he can make a good movie yeah and i although avatar visually was amazing it's not a good movie. it's it's I, I yeah when i when i buy when i bought a new tv recently it was one of the first blurs i put in just to test the picture quality it was almost. It's almost like a pit. It, I use it to test my TVs now because it looks so beautiful. But I have not seen it since the theater. Really? And I don't plan on it. Interesting. It didn't stick. Nothing about that movie stuck with me. Even beyond visually, like, sometimes well, you, uh, the movie's so visually. It's cool to see in 3D. Yes, of course. That's what it was made for. But I totally agree with people. But give Jim Cameron some credit because he made because you don't want to watch it on home video. And I said the same thing when I saw it there. Is like that was an awesome experience, but. Once you watch it at home, you're like, uh, because you lose so much from having that big screen experience. Right. So James Cameron's goal, I think, to bring people back to the cinema kind of worked, but it's not a great story. No, and and I wonder if it's going to work For the three sequels. more times because the however many years, what mm. seven years since 3D has oh, kind of come and gone that's true. in those seven years. So I'm I'm curious how these sequels are going to do. <laughs> I know. Well, when you have the like, highest grossing movie of all time, yeah. I'm not surprised he's making a sequel. <laughs> Put it that way. Even though I'm hoping because he made the first one so successful, and yes, the story was so plain and so like just felt like it was recycled from other movies like Dance of the Wolves and all that stuff. I'm hoping he could just go go crazy like he did with like the Abyss. Do something totally different. You have that freedom now. Don't give us some paint by numbers story. Right. Give us the visuals and the story, and then I'll be on board. Or rename it Avatars and just give them guns <laughs> like they have in Aliens, Avatar. and then I've been then I then you got me back on board. It felt like Aliens at times with those mech suits, though, right? A little bit. It's in the Marines. Felt like they're basically the Marines from Aliens. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just I'm not a big Avatar guy. I understand. I was glad it didn't win Best Picture. Oh, I totally don't think it should have won Best Picture. I was surprised it even got nominated. Well, I wasn't. Yeah. Uh, Money wise, I wasn't surprised, but quality wise, I just. I don't know. Why is it when they movies make billions of dollars, they feel like they have to nominate for Best Picture? So, I feel like even if it's not that good of a movie. Well, they didn't nominate The Dark Knight. <sighs> oh, they did. They didn't. No, they, didn't. they changed right. the rules because The Dark Knight. Uh, they expanded God. the field. If Avatar should, got nominated, freaking Dark Knight should got nominated. Yeah, that's a crime. Yeah. Although that, well, I don't want to cause a lot of. No, no. Things. Go ahead. This is what I like to hear. Uh, I watched that again. Like, not uh, not Dark so Knight? long ago. The Dark Knight. Okay. Problems. It doesn't hold up as well as we think it. We were all so blown away by Heath Ledger. <laughs> yes. Okay. That going having that wear off a little bit mm-hmm. structurally, okay, and plot wise, it it doesn't hold up as much as I think a lot of people think it does. Interesting. Listen, I've seen the movie so many times. Yeah. I give me some examples. We're gonna go down a different path here for a minute because I want to sure. explore this. <laughs> it's just so on the nose. Like, as the, far whole, as like, like, the Harvey Dent thing is so on the nose and just like, well, you either die a hero or you live long enough okay. to see yourself become the villain. And then his storyline isn't really paid off. He This whole thing is about the the corruption of yes. Harvey Dent, and uh-huh. then he's dead. I mean, I was kind of shocked when they said, when, when, when Nolan when said that he died at the yeah. end. I'm like, wait, I thought the whole third movie was going to be about yeah. Two-Face and Gotham and Batman, and uh-huh. it's like... it. it 
it just didn't seem do you that think, integral to the story. Do you think maybe that changed once the Heath Ledger death? Because I heard rumors that the story was originally the Joker was going to be in part three with against going against Two Face. And they turned the because now the ending the cops are basically on Batman's right and I the these are just rumors I heard right Batman was facing the cops and trying to was it stuck between a war between Two Face and Joker that I mean which would have been amazing I think Dark Knight Rises was substantially impacted by not having yes it. even though Chris Nolan has said I think that Heath Ledger wasn't going to be a huge part of the third one I There's I no way. I don't buy that don't buy it for a second especially if he if he had was still around and yes. and was still alive and won an Oscar <laughs> and won an Oscar and could, I think he still would have even if he hadn't died yeah and seen the public just would have been clamoring there's no way you're not you're making Dark Knight 3 without the joke there's no way you're making the third Dark Knight yeah. movie and I think I think that kind of bears out because the Dark Knight Rises is just lost let me tell you something me and Mark Ellis on the Schmo crew we we got a lot of heat because we were the only two on that show that didn't love that movie. Yeah. Uh, I have a lot of problems with Dark Knight. I know a lot of people are right now probably yelling at the, through their phones at us. Listen, it's it's not as good as the first two in my book. I what, think the Dark Knight it, Rises? Yeah. It's not even close. It's not even close. Thank you. Uh, there's so many holes. And while I believe Dark Knight does have some problems, I'm not saying it's a perfect movie. No. You go back and watch it, you're going to find some plot holes and some things don't quite add up and some of the motivations don't really pan out. Yeah. But... While those are small and I could forgive them, they were so big in Dark Knight Rises, I couldn't forgive them. It was just a mishmash. I remember watching in the movie with my dad. My dad doesn't go to movies very often. He's an older guy. Yeah. <laughs> he very often does, he, very rarely does he go to movies. And I took him to go see Dark Knight Rises. And the first thing I said to my dad after the movie was like, what did you think? He goes, eh, it wasn't a lot of Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, good point. There wasn't a lot of Batman. <laughs> That stuff has never bothered me, like with Godzilla last year when they were like, oh, we yeah, were right. enough Godzilla. Like, You're a Godzilla fan. If you structure the movie properly, I, I, yeah. it, it wasn't so much that there wasn't a lot of Batman in, uh-huh. in the movie. It just it, it was just all over the place. Here's, here's, one, here's my biggest problem with the movie. I was very excited about the casting of Bane. I thought Tom Hardy would be Tom cool. Tom Hardy's great. And to halfway through the movie, I was still kind of with it because I was like, okay, the first movie he... Fought his teacher, Ra's al Ghul. Right. Awesome. He had a corner fear. Second movie, he found a guy that, no matter how strong he was, Joker didn't care. He just wanted to cause chaos. Right. Uh, at this time, we were facing somebody that he could not beat up. Right. Physically was his superior and just tore him down. So after that first fight, I was like, that wasn't even close, by the way, that first fight. It no. was a straight up ass whooping. That was an ass Bane yeah. just tore him to pieces. And I said to myself, this is awesome. He has to use his intelligence, his detective skills. He's going to have to be the, a different kind of Batman than he's been. He's going to have to use his brains over brawn. That didn't happen, people. Nope. He went to the hole, did some sit-ups. Fixed his back. Fixed his back. Somehow. He came in, and I said, okay, what's his like plan going to be to finally defeat Bane? Beat the crap I'm, out I'm of him. I'm just going to go up and punch him in the face. They didn't even talk about like, <laughs> Even if he came up with like a plan, like I needed to, if he would have just said a sentence, I need to take his mask off. I need to take that or thing something. off. Something. He literally he does say anything. He just goes and punches him, and just happens to punch him in the face where his little tube is. Asks him where the trigger is a bunch of times, yeah. and then and then Catwoman is the one that yeah, that, she, that kills him <laughs> with a freaking cannon. Right. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. I was so disappointed in that movie. And here's the thing: I love Nolan. I love Inception. Do you yeah. Like, it, I, yeah. Yeah. Very. I the thing with Nolan, I was like, this guy's pretty damn genius when it comes to some of the stories he comes up with right i don't want to see batman running this running out of the city with a bomb over it's like adam west which happened in the 60s <laughs> yes. batman movie it's basically adam west running out of the town with a giant bomb with a lit fuse they just did it with the bat wing and he flew out to the ocean i was like come on nolan you had cities coming upside down you had dream within a dream you couldn't come up with something better than batman literally taking a bomb and running out, out of the city and i you know, people, people, especially doing honest trailers, people come at us and say that we, that we nitpick movies too much. And and if you're yeah. if you're genuinely nitpicking, I would agree that yes. it's best not to just overanalyze a movie to death. We mm-hmm. try not to do that when we do an honest trailer. Yeah. We try to like, if we're gonna bring something up, like it shouldn't be something that can easily be explained away or mm-hmm. just you know, it's movies are movies and they're false realities. That's just the truth of it. Do you ever get people saying like, "Oh, you ruined this movie for me"? I hope not. <laughs> But I mean, but <laughs> having said that, there's no way there's no way that bomb a wouldn't have destroyed Gotham City and b that he got anywhere close to far enough away. And from this it. was one of the first things I did when I got the Blu-ray. It's just lazy writing. When you get the Blu-ray, 
the camera cuts to him in the Batwing yeah. at one point when it's not when it's just going over the ocean. He's way out in the ocean. Yeah. Because I was like, at least you know, show me. Don't show me him once he leaves the pier. Right. Then I could maybe believe he ejects somewhere. They cut to him in the Batwing when it's all the f way out there. It's just it's just la- it's lazy. Uh, it's what it's 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 a cheap way to it's what I again I said on movie fights when you do the fake death of a character and mm-hmm. then just go like oh never mind it's number one lazy and number two it it, it cheapens death in movies it's yeah. like it would it, they just do it so do much. Do you think one better if it was ambiguous? Like I said this to a friend of mine. Remember the last scene, the very last scene, Dark Knight. You think he's dead? Yeah. And then you see Michael Caine sit down as Alfred. Yes. Then he sees Bale, and then it cuts back to uh, Alfred, and he has this just this look of joy on his face. Mm-hmm. Imagine if they never cut to Batman. They never should have cut it. If they it just should've... cut him down, he's eating his food, he looks up, he gets his big smile. It's almost like that inception. You're like, wait a minute, did he see Christian Bale? Because that's what he said earlier. The ending ah! of the movie, because he'd already set that up, yes. the ending of the movie should have been an uncut shot of Alfred sitting down. You just see him look up. Yeah. Raise his glass. A smile. Like sm- a little pure bit joy. of a smile. Yeah. And that's it. So you thought about this too? Yes. I'm not crazy. They never should have cut to oh. they never should have cut to Christian Bale. That and, such and, a bad and, and Anne Hathaway. And Anne Oh God, yeah. I don't know what she was doing there. I wish I could like I need to buy a program where I could download this movie and recut that end <laughs> shot. I and show it I think it would just make the movie uh, better for me. Yeah. But there's more problems besides that. <laughs> But anyway, I don't even remember what we were talking about to be with. It's, it's okay. Well, that thing you do. That thing you do. That's right. That's how we got here. How we got. We went for like James Cameron. I know. We, Dark just... Knight. we went totally off topic. Um, yeah, I really want to read that thing you do. It's a movie I really enjoyed. I bought the soundtrack. I remember having the cassette soundtrack. Wow. Um, and it had a second song from the one The Oneaters. The Oneaters. The Wonders. Um, it had a several. It had Little Wild One. It had uh, All My Lonely Dreams. Um, That's right. Yeah, it may have had one more. You got three or four uh, Oneida songs. I wonder the soundtrack. So I need to go Amoeba. Is that where you picked it up? Did you pick up an Amoeba? I, I had <laughs> the it. Thing you do? What the Blu-ray? The Blu-ray. I got from Amazon. Oh, Amazon. Okay, I'll have to check that out. Um, <laughs> one thing I will say about um, the Wonders, or I'm sorry, I, I keep calling them the band. It's the movie that thing you do. Right. Um, what's a movie? If you had, a, if I said, what's another movie you compare this to? Do you feel like there is one? A lot of times you see a movie, you can say, oh, that's like this movie. That thing you do, nothing really pops in my head. You can't can't say Spinal Tap or anything. No. Wasn't there a movie about an Irish band? Like The Commitments or something? Oh, sounds familiar. I haven't seen it, though. It's a very kind of melodrama. Oh, see? Yeah. Uh, That's why I I guess I probably feel about an affair to remember the way some people feel about that thing you do. Okay. And that it's just, to me, it's very broad. And it's very... I want it's, to hear from somebody that yeah. doesn't like that thing you do. Because I can't imagine somebody not liking the movie. Right. It's really well, hard for me to think about that. I can't imagine. You'd have to be a very cynical person. Right. And by the way, Nefer to Remember is not a bad movie. I no, just think of course it's, not. I think it's a bit dated. Here's the problem. Once something invents the wheel and all of our wheels are made, you kind of forget. I mean, like Rashomon by Kurosawa. Right. I mean, it was a great movie for just the way it was told story. Yes. It, totally different. It, you know, now it's, it's, n- it's nothing new. So when you go back and watch Rashomon, you're like, this is nothing groundbreaking. I've seen movies like this a hundred times done better. But you know, you got to remember, that's the movie that started it. It's a movie that started yeah. it all. That's why I think when people talk about Citizen Kane, it's like, oh, mm-hmm. it's boring. Like, I mean, it may not, it may, I, I actually don't think it's boring. Okay. But people forget that they were doing stuff in that movie that had never, exactly. ever been done before. That's where you separate the film geek from the average moviegoer. Yes. <laughs> like, there's certain movies I recommend to friends that I know are just, they don't go to movies for thoughtful, provocative. Right. They work in 9 Which to 5. Which is fine. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. But, like, uh, let me ask you, in, out of the Schmo crew, yeah. I get a lot of, I get made fun of a lot because I like Drive. The Ryan Gosling movie. Uh-huh. <laughs> They're all, they all call me a hippie, hipster. <laughs> Why? Because they're just like, oh, he never talks in the movie. It's just like, I get a lot of crap from the Schmoke crew because they think it's kind of a hipster movie. Not, listen, they like the movie. I love the movie. It was like my number one film of the year that year. Well, well I didn't like it that much. Exactly. But I also, uh, I, I, don't, I don't get, I don't get it when people use that, that argument of like, well, it's all style. Yes. It's like, well, 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 Christian made a good point. The director's the star of the movie. Yes. Not Ryan Gosling, which I kind of agree with. But 
I don't know why. I, I love the movie. I absolutely loved it. Like I said, it was my number one in that year. Right. Um, I just love what it was doing as far as cinematography. For me to make a movie like number one of the year, I have to love every aspect of it. Right. I like the acting I thought was, well, Gosling, yeah, he doesn't say a lot. Albert Brooks. Albert Brooks, yes. Oh, man. Thank you. Even Brian Cranston was supporting role. So good in that movie. Um, and then the cinematography, the story. For some reason, it, it just affected me on all cylinders. Um, and a lot of people hated Only God Forgives. I didn't see it. Oh, okay. That's what I was going to ask you. So you I never didn't saw see God it, Forgives. no. But I, I liked Drive. I didn't flip out over it, but okay. I I, admi- I admired it very much okay. from a filmmaking standpoint. Of course. And I also liked the movie as well. Okay, so good. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give you a hard time. Have you seen any of his previous films like Bronson or... Bronson, yes. Valhalla Rising. Which I loved. Okay. Um, Tom Hardy, so good yeah, in that movie. so good. Valhalla Rising? No. I think the only two I've seen are Drive and Bronson. Okay. Now, I'm curious what made you skip Only God Reviews because it got bad reviews. Got that, booed at Sundance, I believe. That's probably what. That's probably why. Yeah, because I mean, like I said, I liked Drive, but I didn't. Okay. I didn't flip out over it so much okay. that I was like, I have to see the next movie that this guy does. And gotcha. so I heard some really, really terrible things about Only God Forgives. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And I think that's why. Although I have friends, I have one friend in particular that loves that movie, so I'll probably check it out at some point. I here's the thing, because I love Drive, and Only God Forgives is not as good as Drive. Mm-hmm. But I could watch it, and I saw it in a the theater. And I was glad I saw it by myself because I just sat down. You kind of really need to – you don't want to be on your cell phone. Right. You don't want you to have your laptop when you're watching this movie because it is very slowly paced and very kind of just drawn out at times. Even though it's only 90 minutes long, yeah. you've got to give your full attention. And I think it's beautifully shot. But it's hard – Chris Stuckman is an online reviewer. He was on Movie Fights. He has a great video actually where he breaks down the movie. He does these video breakdowns once in a while. Right. And – I watched the movie. I really enjoyed it. I watched Stuckman's breakdown, and I liked it even more because he kind of brought some really good points. I don't want to tell you what they are because I haven't sure. seen the movie, but I recommend checking it out. I wouldn't say go around and buy it, but maybe borrow it from somebody. <laughs> sure. I mean, but do you – this happens to me sometimes where I'll see a movie mm-hmm. that I admire yep. but I don't like. Yeah. I mean, A Tree of Life. Yeah. Oh, Terrence boy. Terrence Malick movie. I, I, that one even I, transcended I, for yeah. me. It was just like, I, at some point, I'm just like, I get the whole yeah. art thing, but I, about halfway through that movie, I was like, come on, dude. That's the thing. Like, I'm glad I watched it once. Yeah. Just so I could absorb it, but I will probably never watch it again. Oh, God, no. No. See? And that's what I'm, that's kind of is what you were saying, I'm guessing. Yeah. Like, give well, me the, another example of a movie that you there's admired, a movie. Co- there like. was a movie that came out last year, maybe the year before, called The Place Beyond the Pines. Oh, yeah. Okay. That I really, really admired. Uh-huh. Because I I it took a lot of storytelling risks. Yes. And they were very ambitious with what they tried to do in the movie and it and it certainly wasn't, you know, it could have gone I thought it was going one way and it went a completely different way, mm-hmm. but I didn't like it. Interesting. I thought it was two thirds of a very good movie. The first third. First, yeah. Second and the, the, the third, third part act, especially just totally. That's fell where apart. it fell apart for yeah. me too. Um I remember watching that in theaters and thinking, this movie could be top ten material. Yeah. Then the last story, which is the third act of the movie, I said, ooh, you lost me at the end. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you had me, man. You had me, you let me go. Uh, I don't want to ruin a movie for anybody. Right. I still recommend checking it out. The, people, filmmakers need to take those risks. Exactly. Because otherwise the, the, the medium gets um, stale. So I admire when someone takes a risk. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's a great one it succeeds, but it's also a film that I would say, you know... I watch it because you know that that kind of risk reward thing is what happens. And they don't all work. They're not all pulp fiction. They don't yeah. all pay off. That also works with like disturbing movies. Um, I I watch Antichrist because oh, everyone yeah. was talking about it. Yeah, I'll never watch it again. That's not my. Uh, Have you seen it? That, that's not my thing. Like disturbing, like irreversible oh, and stuff did, like that. Have you seen Irreversible too? No. And okay, so I've that's seen just not. Um, it's just that, not my thing. Yeah. It's not my thing. Here's, here's I get thing. it. It's just not my thing. I totally get you. And always, it's not like I went out and bought those movies. I watched Antichrist on Netflix. Yeah. Same thing. Irreversible, I think I actually, a friend let me borrow the DVD back in the day. Because it was just more curiosity factor. Right. And while those movies are not, it's hard to call them good movies or bad movies, I can understand somebody appreciating what they're doing, especially filmmaking wise. There's some great filmmaking stuff, even Irreversible, which is, Got some really hard moments to watch. It's just if you're watching as a filmmaker, right. some impressive stuff in there. No camera work and stuff like that. 
But I totally understand if you never want to watch it. I wouldn't be like, oh, you got to see this. I'd be like, if anyone was going to watch it, I'd caution them first. Yes. Be like, listen, if you want to watch it just for the filmmaking curiosity, I understand. But don't, you'll probably never watch it again. Movies are, are here to do a lot of different things. And yep. ultimately, they're, they're storytellers. And I, and, and I realize that there are some that, that, that are, it's important <laughs> yeah. to have, actually, films that kind of reflect the ugliness or the, or the grotesque or the, mm-hmm. the, the savage parts of humanity. Siberian film again one I've heard about that I haven't seen that's one I haven't seen because some of the stuff I heard in that is Uh, beyond Serbian Serbian film what I say Siberian Siberian. that's even better title what are they thinking Um, Serbian film yeah because it takes place in Serbia yeah Um, I recognize the place and importance of those movies Mm -hmm. but it's just not my thing yeah I think I tried watching a Serbian film one time and I just even that pushed the limits a little bit too much for me Boy, we've gone from that thing got- you do to a Serbian film. <laughs> we went to the total... we gone from <laughs> north to I- south. <laughs> I feel like I should get an award for that. <laughs> to go from that thing you do to a Siberian film. <laughs> a a Serbian film. S- Serbian film. Listen, I'm famous for my mispronunciation. <laughs> oh, man. This, we went all over the map to parts of the map that aren't even lit. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, this has been a long podcast, but we could talk about movies all day. I can't. I can't. I could, and you I could. and I can, and I do often. <laughs> I'm right there with you, buddy. Um, all right. So before the show, I tweeted out a crap load of, you know, who, what movies have you seen? And the fans always respond awesomely. So Great. I'm going to go over some of these. Let's say, but you know, I don't want to end on a Siberian film. <laughs> Siberian film. Serbian. Serbian film. I want. Let's talk one one last good thing about that thing you do. Um, I'm going to go buy this movie. Cause Please do. I loved it growing up. I bought the soundtrack. I didn't even know it was available on Blu-ray, to be honest with you. I didn't either. So, I, think it, I don't know if it's recent, but I, I was happy to see that it was, finally. This is one of those movies. If it, was, it used to be playing on HBO once in a while. Yeah. When it was on, I would stop, and I would watch it. Because it made, automatically just made me feel good. Yeah. And those movies are kind of rare these days. So if you guys, I can't imagine anybody not liking this movie. Uh, your girlfriend's going to like it. Your parents will like it. It's a really a movie anybody can watch and have a good time with. So, guys, if you haven't seen it, uh, do your best to go out there and try to find it. I don't think it's streaming anywhere right now. Not that I know of. Not, not that I know of also. Um, but if you could find it cheap on a DVD, even if you don't have to go Blu-ray. But I think really is like for hardcore fans right now because yeah. it's a smaller film. Check the movie out. Tom Hanks, this was in his prime. He was doing no wrong. It's, out, it's easily his best directed film. And I highly recommend it. It has the JTE stamp of approval. Oh, wow. I think you concur. It's, it definitely has the, the Dan Merle stamp of approval. I mean, I think we need like an Ebert Roper, Dan and JTE kind of thing going on here. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We're going to go to the Twitter feed, and we're, let's get some of your opinions. It's called Quick Thinks. Sure. Uh, we're going to get some opinions on uh, some movies that you've seen. This is great because I get this gives me a little more insight into what kind of movies you like. All right, here we go. All right, I'm ready, uh, to, I'm ready to think quick. Think quick, <laughs> Uh, Christopher Lean at Chris MRGN said Lost in Translation what's um, your thoughts on this movie I like it still I, I, it was one of those that I flipped for it when it came out same here and over the years it's lost a little bit okay for me but I, I Bill Murray still in that movie it was the best it was the best uh, I love that movie I flipped out. I flipped for it when it came out yeah um, I was rooting for him to win Best Picture that year, but I think he lost uh, Sean, Sean Penn, Penn for Mystic River. Mystic River which it's hard really to am- argue that. It, it's not for me. What? Are you kidding me? That crying scene alone? He was so over the top. Come on. So over the top in Mystic River. Bill Murray's performance was so much more naturalistic. I watched Mystic River n- not that long ago. and, and, and Still holds up, man. The movie, yes, but Sean Penn is so... I mean, if the walls could break away, he'd be chewing the walls. That, he won because that scene with Tim Robbins on the porch, where he broke down. He finally showed... I mean, I underst- I guess I can understand what you're saying, but I love Mr. Grover. It's one of my favorite movies. Yeah. I Clint just, Eastwood's. I, I just, knowing that we know now, I know that he'd win it again like three years with later. Milk. I just wish that I wish that Bill Murray had won. Yeah, and he was mad when he lost too. Do you remember that? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, he, he tried not, to hide it, but he, he was tried to hide it. He was pissed. Because Billy Crystal was an a hole and called him out from on stage. That's a whole other thing. Yeah, that's another story. Um, let's go with another fan here. Uh, Brady Powell, Powell Brady White at Powell Brady YC. Uh, says Jurassic Park. He's uh, tell me about your movie going experience because I always tell everybody it's one of the defining experiences for me because it's rare you go see a movie and you've seen something you've never seen before. Yes, especially in this day and age. I was. This is. It's funny you ask that because okay. Jurassic Park is one of the very few movies that I remember, especially if I was ten. Okay. That I crystal clear remember. Oh. 
I'm right there with you. I because when you're that young, and also it, the the hype machine wasn't as 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 fierce back in '93 as it is well, now. There's no internet. There's no internet. <laughs> yes. And you know when you're there's still when, some magic when you went to the movie theater because you didn't know exactly what you're gonna. I get. didn't know exactly what I was gonna get. You know, I knew it had dinosaurs, and yep. I was like, "Cool, I want to go see that." And I just remember the thing I remember is uh, the theater was so full, people were sitting in the aisles. Yes, I I sat in like the third row of my theater because there were no seats left, and, uh, and I, was I still happy as hell. I think I probably saw that um, two or three more times in the theater. Yeah, that was yeah, that was one of those you know landmark movies a, of totally my great. childhood. Here's the thing. I've, before that movie, dinosaurs have never been recreated before realistically. It no. was always claymation. Animation, claymation. So, there, were, there were some movies that did some, like, you know, practical effects. Right. But it was so obviously like a, a giant puppet robot. This movie, when that T-Rex came out after eating that goat, oh my God. It, w- there was no question that I was seeing a real-life T-Rex. There was no CGI. There was no special effects. <laughs> that was a Tyrannosaurus Rex. It was a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I was like, they fucking really grew a T-Rex and made this movie. And the raptors? The, the, yeah. And, and, yeah that... Nowadays, that thing would have been leaked online. Uh, they would have showed the whole T-Rex. They would have shown the, the whole movie. T-Rex in the, in the trailers. Trailer. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We're going on a little... <laughs> I miss those days. I miss those days of just being pure going to the movie theater. Yep. Um, so, yeah, go see Jurassic World, everybody. I already saw it. I can't really say anything. Although, maybe when this comes out, the embargo will be lifted. All I'm going to say is go see the movie. Like you weren't going to anyway. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Trevor at Trevor Soros. Wow, we're going to hit a Jurassic Park theme wow. here. Um, Apollo 13. We're talking about Tom Hanks. Wow. Great movie. Great movie. It was nominated for Best Picture that year. Nominated for Best Picture. Was, was lost to Braveheart. That's right. That's the year lost Braveheart. That was the year that Ron Howard, everyone thought he was finally oh, going to win an Oscar, man. and he lost to Mel Gibson. And I didn't know the story. Neither did I. I mean, you didn't know You mean you didn't know if they were going to land? I mean, I figured <laughs> I figured that they were probably going to not yeah. die. Okay. Because I obviously, yes. if, if I didn't know about these hero astronauts that had died, then yeah. But, but I didn't know exactly what happened or all the things that went wrong. And okay. Uh, yeah, it's such a good movie. I, it's it's one of those movies I could watch over and over. I throw I have the Blu-ray. I put it in every once in a while, and second it starts, I'm sucked in. Yeah. I'm just totally sucked in. It still probably is Ron Howard's best movie. Would you say that? It's up there. I'm trying to think if there's one that would top it. I, yeah, I it's think his best movie. I, I mean, I love Backdraft. Is... I think it's cheesy at times, but fun. I thought Rush was really good. I don't Rush think it got was... enough credit. Yeah, that surprised me. Um, what else has he done? I mean, well, Willow? Beautiful Mind was what he won. <laughs> oh, he won Beautiful Mind, best picture. See that? I mean, Paul Thirteen's better than Beautiful Mind. I right? think so too. Yeah. Thank you. I, I feel like uh, Beautiful Mind. No one talk. You know, it's funny when you t- think about movies like that. You never think about like. Um, Certain movies just don't feel like they're talked about anymore. No. No one's talking about a beautiful, beautiful mind. mind anymore. That never comes up when I'm hanging out with my geek friends. It never comes up in conversation. No one talks about Chicago. No one, exactly. On a daily basis. Nobody talks about Chicago. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Chicago. Ugh, I never, I, I never seen. I liked Chicago. I've never seen it to this day. Nothing against it. I, I like musicals, so I, mm-hmm. I, I enjoyed Chicago. But it's one of those best picture winners that it's like no one. When was the last time you heard somebody talk about the great <laughs> yeah. Best Picture winner in Chicago? Or, Nothing be- against it. Or Beautiful Mind. Or Beautiful Mind. Paul 13, I still think Braveheart probably should have it, though. So I'm not, I can't disagree with that. Yeah, that's, it's that's, close. That's, that's, it's close. It's that's close. a tough one. That's a tough one. To, Ed Harris, though, should have uh, won. I forget who won, but win. he should have won Best Supporting Actor. Uh, oh, wait. He still played no, the character. Who won? I think that was your spacey one. That was the your spacey one for usual suspects. Okay, well then. Yeah, it's hard to beat yeah, that. Yeah, it's hard to beat it's that. It's hard to beat that. <laughs> it's tough. Some of the years, you know, if he was out a year earlier or later, who knows, he probably would have won. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Uh, Hector Tabor at What the Hector. Desperado. Robert Rodriguez is a follow up to El Mariachi. Uh, El Mariachi, yeah. El Mariachi. What did you think of that movie? Uh, I saw it when I was a teenager, and I okay. haven't seen it since, but, seen I, it since. but I remember thinking it was really cool. That's all I can really remember about it. I remember thinking it was really cool, and there was a guy who had like a, a, a gun, a guitar case or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember it because uh, I was a huge John Woo fan growing up. Mm-hmm. I love the killer Hard Boiled. Have you seen those? Hard-boiled I have a funny story about Hard Boiled. Okay, go if ahead. You wanna, sure, go ahead. It's my only real kind of celebrous story from living in LA for what? a decade. If you met Chang Fat, I'm going to no, shit I didn't, myself. No, I didn't. I went to. Uh, 
it, when Hot Fuzz came out, yeah, the the Edgar, the, the, right? the, the follow up to Shaun of the Dead, yeah, they did a pr- pr- sneak preview premiere thing, mm-hmm. and uh, Edgar Wright and and Simon Pegg and Nick Frost were there, and it was a triple feature. Okay, it was Hot Fuzz. Okay, uh, followed by Point Break, classic. Followed by Hard Boiled because they were kind of like, we'll show you the movie and then ah. we'll show you the movies that inspired the that movie. That sounds like a, that's an awesome lineup. And they were introducing all three, mm-hmm. and. It started at like five, and the night before was when Grindhouse had come out. Oh, okay. The night before, I'd gone to a midnight show of Grindhouse, which is like a three-hour movie. Where at? <coughs> at the Vista, actually. Okay, I was going to say, I, I was here for that, and I saw it at the Chinese Theater. Yeah, I, I saw, saw it. at the main Chinese, the Grindhouse premiere. Like, it wasn't the premiere, but it was like the opening night. Right, it was the, we we gone opening night at midnight to see okay. it. So it, I was like, gone to bed at like three in the morning, Jesus. and then this has started at like five the next afternoon, yeah. and I was there with a friend of mine. And we were both pretty tired, so we stayed for Hot Fuzz, we stayed for... Point Break. Point Break. And then Edgar Wright introduced uh, Hard, Hard Boiled, Boiled and okay. it got about five minutes in, and... Uh, Those first five minutes are amazing, uh, by the way. Well, yeah, but, but not, maybe not even five minutes <laughs> okay. in. Okay. And we both were just really tired. Okay. And so we said... We both oh, talked to each no. other, and we were like, do you want to mm. watch? And we're like, I'd like to stay, but I just, I'm just yeah. really tired, so we uh-huh. were like, okay, we're going to leave. Oh, so no. we walk out. And he's never seen Hard Boiled that Never point? seen Hard Boiled. We walk out, and in the lobby of the theater, talking to mm-hmm. the manager, is Edgar Wright. Edgar Wright, okay. And he sees us walking out, and he's like, what are you, where are you going? Where are you going? You're, you're not going <laughs> yeah. to watch the movie? And, and I said, um, yeah, I'm sorry. Like we, uh, first of all, I was getting over like, holy shit, yeah, I'm holy talking shit, to Edgar talking Wright. Yeah, talking to Edgar Wright. Uh, and I was like, yeah, I'm so sorry. Like, we loved the movie, and, yeah. and we just were out late last night. We're really tired, so we're going to go home. And he's like, well, you've seen Hard Boiled, right? It's, he's, oh, he did it in man. the charming English way. Of course. Way. It's like, you've seen Hard Boiled. Because right? he is being a great human being at this point. Yeah. Because if you haven't seen Hard Boiled, exactly. you don't miss Hard Boiled for the first time in a theater. Exactly. I would kill somebody for that chance. So he, <laughs> we were like, no, we haven't seen Hard Boiled. He goes, okay. So he he, no he, he 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 puts his arm on the back of my neck. He oh. puts his arm on the back of my friend's neck, and he turns us around. Yeah, and he walks us back into the theater and back to our seats. And he and he says, "I'll watch the first fifteen minutes of this movie with you, if you promise to stay for the rest." And we're like, "Okay." Hell yeah. So we watched the first. <laughs> then we watched the first like fifteen twenty minutes yeah. of Hard Boiled with okay. Edgar Wright, and then he got up. And he goes, now stay. Did you stay? Yes. Of course. Okay. Are you kidding me? Of course we stayed. <laughs> I was about to delete this whole episode. So if you if anyone ever doubts that Edgar Wright has a pure, uh, yeah. true love of cinema, he physically marched two people that had never seen Hard Boiled back into a theater. He is doing God's work. Yeah. Let me tell you, that's an amazing story. Yeah. That's, and that's, he did, I, if I was Edgar Wright, I would have done the same thing to you because I love Hard Boiled. It is an action masterpiece. Yeah. And he uh, he, he actually, like, well, this is, dates it a little bit. He, he MySpaced about it. And I, did, <laughs> I did wrote him, and I, and I wrote him back and he was like, I was telling my friends about you. I was like, I was telling my friends about you. <laughs> um, so what did you think of Hard Boiled when you saw it? Were you blown it away? It was, it was amazing. Of course, it was great. Uh, yeah. What a great story. I know. That's like the, Literally, probably the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. Anyway, Desperado, good movie. <laughs> yeah, Desperado, cool, as I remember, a cool movie. Yeah, a cool movie, a very John Woo influence. All right, we're going to do one more because we're going off on movie crazy tangents. I know, I'm oh. sorry, I keep, Listen, I keep taking you down these you, side roads. When you get two movie geeks together, this is what happens. <laughs> Uh, we're going to do one more, and I'm curious about this one because this is a movie I watched, and let me say it's from Shane Clifford, at Nice2R2CU. Awesome Twitter <laughs> right, name. I love it. <laughs> um, I saw this movie, be- and this is based on a TV show. Okay. I'd never seen one episode of the TV show, mm-hmm. and I went, saw this movie, and I actually saw it at AMC Burbank. Okay. Uh, I remember this vividly, and I, I really dug this movie, and it's called Serenity. Have you? Are you a fan of Firefly? I've never, I went and watched it after watching the movie. Then I went because I really like Serenity. Did you like Serenity? It's my question. To you have you seen it? I'm about to take a big hit to my to my geek credentials. No, have you not seen Serenity? I have neither seen Firefly nor oh, Serenity. I'm glad we found something. We found something on you. Okay. I've I've seen all of Buffy. Okay. But I never. It's always been on my to do list. I think I once tried to watch Serenity. Okay. And I got five minutes in and I wasn't quite getting. What getting it on? Okay. so i was like oh, i should watch the show first and i never got around to watching the show here's the thing i i, I really dug the movie because to me it was something original it was a sci-fi thing and it was a lot of fun uh, i went back watched firefly it's okay 
I'm not like the biggest Firefly fan. Okay. I mean, it was great. To give me give me some background on the sh- on on the movie, mm-hmm. but I don't feel like you need to watch the series before you watch the movie. Okay. I think the movie does a good job of being kind of self contained. All right. There's only one relationship in the movie, well, two that you kind of feel like, yeah, there's some backstory there. I just feel like I, I should know, know the backstory. Yeah, right? but you could watch the movie then watch the series like I did, and it's like filling in those holes, but they're not holes of where it's going to take you out of the movie. Okay. Yeah, I, I, it's, I, I don't <laughs> but, have a good excuse for it. It's just okay. something I've never gotten around to seeing. But yeah, maybe do it that way. Watch Firefly. Okay. There's only like seven episodes. Or like that. I don't think there's that many episodes. Probably not. There's only one season of like 10, 11 episodes. Right. Then go watch the movie. And you know who's great in the movie as the villain? Uh, the guy who starred in 12 Years a Slave and Red Belt. Uh, Fassbender? No. Chimino. Chiwetel Ejiofor? Chiwetel Ejiofor, yes. Yeah. He plays like this bounty hunter who's hunting them. Okay. He plays such a good villain. This dude needs to play more villains because he's the best thing. He's basically the best thing in Serenity because he plays such a badass. Like, he's a special ops ninja, basically, who's chasing them down and is just killing people. He has that English accent, which every villain should have an English accent, I, as far as I'm concerned. Every I, I agree. I mean, it's hard to uh, it's hard to. I'm looking at these tweets too, just to make sure there's nothing I can't not talk about. Uh, <laughs> it's hard. It, it's hard to beat a, a, a villain with a, with an English yeah. accent. Yeah, and I, that was the first movie I saw him in too. Because this was pretty early in his career. I mean, he's done like 2012 and some bigger budget films. Have you seen Red Belt? The one he did with uh, David Mamet. I've even heard of Red Belt. Oh yeah, David Mamet directed it. Uh, the guy did Glenn Glary, Glenn, Glenn Ross. One of my top ten um, favorite movies of all time. Oh, well, really? He didn't do, he didn't do the movie. <clears throat> he did... Um, it, was, it was based on his play. It was based on his play, yeah. But he's actually directed a few movies. Have you seen any films he directed? I have. I've seen a couple. Spartan. Spartan I did not Okay. Like. If you're going to watch one David Mamet directed movie, I recommend Spartan with Val Kilmer. It's before Val Kilmer was out of shape. It is a badass No, I movie. saw it. I didn't like it. You didn't like Spartan? No. All right, guys. That was another episode of JT Movie Thinks. <laughs> How did I like... I thought that was a badass movie, man. I, it, what did you like about it? They were talking it? like they were Martians. Like, nobody in that movie seemed to know how a human being... It, was, it very much reminded me of a writer directing a movie. He just could not direct his actors to act like human persons. I, I understand where you're going there, but he was like a super special force. He wasn't a normal guy. I just didn't like it. Oh, man. I, I didn't like it. Man, well, maybe I should rewatch it, but I recall just not. <laughs> hey, we're not going to agree all. on everything. It's understandable. Yeah. Um, I recommend you check out Spartan Guys. I think it's a very badass. The last good Val Kilmer movie, really, in my opinion. If you think it's a good movie, you could say that. <laughs> it's good to McGruber. Uh, yeah, yeah, but that's not a Val Kilmer Dieter movie. Kump. <laughs> uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, I, I recommend checking out Spartan. Also, Red Belt is with uh, Chiwetel Ekafor, something like that. I can't say his name. Uh, it's with, like, he plays this guy who's a mixed martial artist, and Tim Allen's actually in the movie. Yeah. Buzz Lightyear Tim yeah. Allen? Okay. <laughs> yeah. He's like this, kind of like this movie star, and he gets in a fight in a bar, and Chiwetel kind of helps him. Mm-hmm. And then he kind of uses him to, like, enter this Chujitsu tournament. It's kind of like a weird sports movie meets David Mamet movie. Okay. If David Mamet was going to direct Best of the Best or like Karate Kid, it's kind of like what his version would be. Interesting. Okay. It's a lot about mixed martial arts. You sold. You kind of sold. Me. Kind of sold. You. Okay. I'm not saying it's a fantastic movie. Right. It's not like oh you need to run out and see it. Right. But I'd recommend checking it out. Fair enough. I think he gives very good performance. All right. Uh, do you see any more? Is there any movies you feel like you saw you wanted to really talk I mean, about? There were a bunch, but I feel like I've just. I feel like I've been I've rambled on for a while. I could, I could literally do this all day. I know. I could too, man. This is uh, what it's all about. I'm going to give one more look just to make sure I'm not missing anything. I mean, there's so many tweet guys. I'm sorry I can't get to all of them. Um, but, you know, listen, we only got so much time. I'll have, I will have Dan on again. We will go on many more rants, I promise you that, if you want to be on. Of course. Okay. And like, I'd love to. Uh, one last movie, and this is only because... I've argued this movie on this podcast okay. with several other people. Oh, cool. Wow. Some of them said they did not like it. Right. And I really liked it. Okay. Snowpiercer. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Okay. Awesome. All right. I'm glad. Cause, um, it fell apart like toward it. the end. But the, you tell the, the whole, the last the, like the 10 last, minutes? Yeah, the last okay. 10 minutes, that, that kept it from being great for me. Gotcha. But the, the scene in the... Uh, Train car with the kids, the school kids. The best scene in the movie. That was one of the best pieces of dystopian science fiction I've yeah. ever seen in my life. It was so creepy. It, yeah. And the movie really does kind of play like an anime. Yeah. Doesn't it? It does. It plays like a real live action anime, which I totally dug. And let me tell you something. I saw that movie a year before it came out here. They, uh, the Weinsteins did a test screening in Pasadena. Really? Where we did a focus group afterwards. You know, in Hollywood, guys, they do these screenings. They focus groups? They, near Snowpiercer? Yes. 
And I don't know if you remember, there was a lot of controversy about that movie getting director's cut by the Weinsteins. <sighs> so I saw the movie uh, almost exactly a year before it came out in the States. Mm-hmm. And I sat in there, and I can't tell you how refreshing it was to watch a movie where I had no idea what was going to happen from one moment to the next. Yeah. Because as you're going through this train, you have no idea what's going to be on that next train. No. And when I went to this movie, there was no trailer. I literally went because of the synopsis and the director, the guy who directed The Host. Right. Which, you know, I really dug that film. He made a movie called Memories of Murder, which is an un- unbelievable film. Okay. I think it's up there with Zodiac and Seven as one of the best serial killer movies. Um, so I love the director. That's why I got my ass in the scene in the first place. And to sit in that theater and just be like, ah, this is so refreshing because I have no idea what the hell's going to happen next. That's very rare in a Hollywood studio system. Yeah, definitely Matrix is out. Uh, as, as I like you to think call so? it. You at think the Matrix end. out with it? Yeah. Definitely Matrix, Matrix is. But I think a lot of people, and I get that a lot of people, don't, I've heard a lot of people mm-hmm. say they didn't like it. I think people, and I have to stop myself from doing it a lot too. Okay. I think if the ending of a movie isn't good, people forget everything that was good about it and they yeah. just focus on that. And for me, it was like, yes, the ending wasn't that good, but. That doesn't discount all of the great stuff. The that great came ride in the focus group that we had after the movie. A lot of the people were complaining about the ending. <laughs> yeah, and I was one of the few where I didn't hate the ending. I was like, whatever. It's I didn't a foreign. Hate you it. know what? It's a. You know why it's a weird ending? Because it's a foreign movie director making a an American language American film starring language Captain film. America. Yeah, and that's why when I was in high school, I I really went to foreign films because I want something different. Because Hollywood is going to be one, two, three. You know what you're going to get. Yeah. So I, when I was in that focus group and all these idiots around me were like, no, I don't – like that made no sense. I said, I don't think you should change the single thing. So everyone doesn't like the ending. It's your fault. No, no. They didn't they, – they, If you didn't like the ending to Snowpiercer, yes, send your complaints me. to at, uh, uh, JTE. at JTE. At Schmoes JTE. At Schmoes JTE because he's the sole Listen, reason why the ending for Snowpiercer didn't work. Here's the thing. I don't think the ending was great. Uh-huh. It was serviceable. But they didn't film another ending. They either were going to cut it out, or they were going to cut the movie. The movie, I think, runs a little over two hours. Something like that. They were originally going to cut it down to 90 minutes. Uh, and watching that movie, I was like, I don't know what you're going to cut out of this movie. I, I mean, yeah, you could probably cut some stuff out, but it would just I think it would have destroyed the whole overall feeling and just the way the surprises the movie gave you. True. I just hate, I hate when any movie, a lot like Matrix Reloaded. And everything and then that being said though psycho does it. psycho did it it's not new psycho explained the whole thing at the end of the movie that being said the very last couple frames of that film i had no idea that was gonna happen true i i just <laughs> wish they would have gotten a different from there to there in a different different, a different way okay way. i understand yeah. that i respect that all right guys <laughs> we're gonna try to close the show out Boy. again <laughs> my apologies to all your <laughs> listeners i'm sorry this will be one of the longer episodes but i think we earned it i think we did a good job of uh, talking movies that's why you guys all listen, because we're movie geeks. Um, do me a favor and tell me, tell them where they can find you. Uh, at Merle Dan on Twitter is okay. where I mainly am. And uh, YouTube.com slash Screen Junkies. That's right. Screen Junkies. Honest Trailers, the Screen Junkie show. I love working with you guys. Uh, it's a blast. Uh, how the whole crew just, it's, it's one of the, my favorite things to watch on YouTube. And I'm oh, not cool. just saying Thank that. Thank you. The last week's episode where Hal went to London, I laughed out loud on the subway as I was watching it, and people were looking at me like I was a weirdo because I was laughing so hard. <laughs> we got so much hate. Hal yeah. pissed off every British, it was uh, great. every fan of Screen Junkies from the UK. Did it was he really? Fun. Oh, there were so many angry uh, people from the UK in the comments that did not care for what he did uh, in their country. But. Go check out that video, guys. It's basically he went to a uh, junket for Kingsmen where they're doing like this whole proper how to be a spy thing. And he just starts bringing up Austin Powers movies, and it's amazing. <laughs> uh, and also check out Honest Trailers. Uh, I mean, what do I? I'm, I'm going to sell you Honest Trailers. <laughs> Everyone and their mothers watch those things; they're the best. Um, thank you so much, Dan, for coming on. Hey, um, it really, legitimately, is my pleasure. <laughs> it's why I love doing movie fights so much. It's, yes, I, this is my passion, and I love talking about it. So thanks for having me on. I, I would come, love to come back anytime. <laughs> You're the champ. And I can't wait to get you in my rig at the sh- ultimate schmodown. Oh, boy. I don't know if we're going to face off against each other. We'll each have to... You have a better chance of making it farther than I do. We'll see. You're, you're with Mark Riley, the last year's champ. We'll you see. You guys are the favorites to win this whole thing. Uh, I mean, hey, that's <laughs> underdog stories are born out of taking down the favorites, so <laughs> you never know. That's true. All right, guys, you can catch me at Schmoes JTE. 
um, on <laughs> Twitter and Instagram. On Periscope, I'm just JTE. Are you on Periscope, Dan? I'm just starting out on Periscope. Just starting out. What are you? Is it the same thing? <laughs> no idea. No idea. I think it's hooked. I think it's connected through my Twitter. I don't. I literally made an account and then I went and saw like, oh, the people are following me. I had. I didn't even know people knew I had it. I'm such a non-techno. F- I I collect Blu-rays and I don't know how to work Periscope. I'm a 60 year old man. I'm it's sorry. all right, uh, guys. You can catch me every Monday uh, noon, 12:30 ish, depending on when we start the show on Box Office Breakdown where we break down the box office numbers every weekend. Uh, I host that show with Bobby Finstock, a.k.a. Tom Dagnino, and Sarah Stratton. Check that out. It's a lot of fun. Listen, I'm not, I'm a geek, and I would not somebody that would go out and go listen to a box office show. We do our best to make it as entertaining as possible because that is not something I would go out and look for. Uh, also, as usual, every Thursday from 6 to 8, live on the Schmoes No Movie Show, I am engineering, and once in a while I get to poke my head on the mic and Talk some movies. Best engineer in the business. The, you know, I try. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Thanks so much. And if you're on iTunes, leave me a review and a five stars if you feel like I gave you a five-star podcast. I think we did. I hope so. Star. I yeah. hope it was. We'll see. All right, guys. I, that Serenity thing might drop it down. Oh, maybe. All right, guys. Have a good one. Peace.